No big dicks in the WWE Hall of Fame at this time. A lot of big dick heads, probably, but no big dicks speaking in the of, WWE Hall of, of Fame. Heads, here comes Jinzei Shinzaki. Oh, coming right out of the old commentary ninja school. You know, this is like, this is like racist. What, what you're doing right now? No, what uh, him walking out and shit like this. He picked his wardrobe. It's still racist. How okay. It, it is. What, I mean, he, he, he comes out. Look here. This is pretty fucking cool. But the other guy coming out like that looks like he was just come from rice patties or something. No, people don't dress like that in rice patties. Dumbass. How do you know how people dress in rice patties? They may dress like that in rice patties on Sunday. You, I'll listen to you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they might. They don't. Let me just give you a spoiler. Okay. No, nobody's working a rice field dressed in this sort of formal white garb that. Okay. Ha All right. So Shinzaki has on. How about the uh, Hakushi tats? He's still rocking for this American crowd. Whoa, man. Oh, man. I used to have a, uh, a friend who was such a fan of his that he got three Japanese symbols tattooed across his throat. And I would tell everybody that it was, uh, Japanese instructions for a tracheotomy. What? Yeah. Yeah. You're bullshitting me on that one. No, he's probably listening right now. Yeah. This, you haven't met him. This is a, you got man. I tell you. It's a fucking cool fucking look right here, man. Which one? Both? No, the guy who's all tatted up. That is Jinzei Shinzaki. Shinz wow, that is fuck. How come we never tried to use him in WCW? Well, he was on WWF as Hakushi. Yeah. And didn't get over to the degree that a lot of people expected. Maybe it's because of the pairing they had. If he had I mean imagine if Paul Heyman today yeah. were his mouthpiece, how great that would have been. Yeah, they just, if he didn't get over on the, in the WWF back then, it's because they didn't know how to use him. Uh, just it's a not like a handful of years I, after this, Hayabusa would, uh, go to do like a triple jump moonsault of sorts in the ring, uh, sort of like, uh, the Chris Jericho lion salt that you've seen where he goes and bounces off the second rope and does a flip yeah. backwards, but he yeah. landed directly on his head and paralyzed himself. Uh, see, and his career was cut short and yeah. This is still the match that he had that a lot of people talk about as being the premier match on American soil for him. He was also a part of FMW, the promotion we were talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. So he became a, a tape trading legend here in the States, but this is the match. Everybody sort of hangs their hat on for him. And this match is going to get uh, only two stars, but the fans just went crazy for this. All of my friends thought this was the match of the night. I disagreed because I was such a Mike awesome fan, but my buddies were in love with this match. Why would a why, uh, what was the reasoning? Can you read to me the reasoning? It was a two-star match. If everybody that you talked to love it, loved it. I mean, well, there's going to be some, there's going to be some sloppy stuff. Okay. Sloppy stuff, <laughs> like throwing a guy over the top rope onto the table. Ain't just sloppy stuff. <laughs> the match was starting to get real sloppy at this point. Sabu pulled out a table. The table leg didn't stand upright. Shinzaki seemingly panicked about it. It was one of those moments where time stood still and the match totally fell apart, which was a shame because up until this point, they were doing a hell of a match. The last four minutes were a mismatch of Shinzaki doing dragon screws and everyone trying to do moves with no focus or crowd reaction. Uh, Sabu got two more tables as insurance. Van Dam did the Van Daminator on Shinzaki after Sabu did an Arabian face buster to the back. I know of Hayabusa. They put the Japanese on the tables, which took forever to set up. It was just a big mess, but the crowd popped big when they got put through. So just, you know, uh, you, you do have, and I don't think this really gets talked about enough when with fans major language barrier here. You know, two yeah. Japanese speaking dudes and two English speaking dudes and we're on pay-per-view and it's not like we've been working a house show loop where we've, we've done this match 17 times. Let's hope it goes well. And in this era, they weren't necessarily walking through everything before the doors opened for fans. So they're just talking in the back, but how much can they even really talk and understand each other? And now out here in front of 
you know, 4,000 fans live and then no telling how many at home, they got to just show the world what we can do. And that presents a particular set of challenges. Always does. And it always did through time. It really did. Even when, you know, we spent some time in Japan, at least I did. And, and there was a, the language barrier there. Uh, there was a close up of, uh, who's the guy with the tattoos again? Hayabushi. Uh, well, for the, for the purposes of, of today, you can call okay. him Hakushi and the other Hakushi. guy is Hayabusa. Hayabusa and Hakushi. Hakushi, I, I, you know, uh, Japanese, and I did spend some time in Japan. Uh, Japanese uh, letters are like symbols. They, they mean something. And when they closed in on him that time, uh, I, I was able to read some of that on his forehead. And it said, Dave Meltzer can suck my dick. It, it, that's what it said in Japanese. I did was able to re translate that. Um, but other than that, I don't know what the rest of it said. They're wasting a lot of time here, guys. It's one of those things where they know they got a lot of time. And, and again, you're, you know, you mentioned about the, the different, uh, the, the language barrier here, I think that's kind of coming into play here right now because the guys on the left don't know how to where, when to start. Van Dam was not known for being fast. Van Dam would, would take as much time as he wanted to do a match. What the fuck's going on here? They having problems with Fonzie? Did Fonzie just shove Sabu or did the, they're, they've always been teasing that Sabu and Van Dam are a team, but sort of reluctantly so. Okay, because got Sabu, it. Sabu thinks he should be the top guy and he should be the main event. But Rob Van Dam is undefeated on pay-per-view and the television champion. And so they're always teasing problems. Did you see uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme's uh, series that was on prime video? No, didn't, didn't last long. <laughs> had a great, had a great premise to it, but didn't last long. Jean-Claude Van Johnson what it was called all right let's get it started come on guys i've had enough of this dancing around yeah i can i can see why this got two stars because they just fucking around here man but in reality how do you follow what we've just seen right yeah yeah i mean it's something that we've we've talked about on many of our podcasts how do you follow a sensational match that you've just seen. It's, it's an impossibility. And they're doing, I mean, or they're doing a little bit of nothing here. I get it. I guess maybe they said after, after what we've just seen, we better just, I don't know. I, I would think it would be me and, and I, there's nothing athletic about me, but I think it would be me that I just saw that. I would say, you know what? Let's go out and top it. Let's go out and, and push it even further. And finally, they finally touch each other, standing switch into a wrist lock, into an ankle lock, just basic wrestling going through here. And the fans right now are just kind of, and I, I shouldn't say to sit here and criticize starting the match the way this they're starting, but it's just kind of different than what we've seen. How long are they supposed to go or how long are they going to go here? They're going to go, we, uh, 20 minutes and 51 seconds. Oh, uh, 20, 51. All right. I was saying we only got a little bit old, more of an hour to go in the show and we got what total of three matches left. Uh, yeah, I think that's right. We got this right. one and then we got Taz and Bigelow and then your main event. Then we got the big dicks yes. in the main event. I like that. That's the part you gravitate to. Yeah. Big dicks. I just big dick Dudley. I just. I just, I don't know what about it. It just catches my eye, so that's, to speak. That's your favorite rat, isn't it? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, oh, there's a, there's a case of, of your, uh, lost in translation type deal there. That spot was kind of messed up. Robbie Van Dam uh, worked for us for a short period of time. If I recall, and, and again, 
as would be the norm. We just didn't know how to use guys. Am I right? Am I remembering that right? He worked for WCW for a bit. Yep. Yep. Wow. Look at that split. Now that's pretty sensational. And, and once again, Doing some pretty good stuff. R a lot of RVD signs in the in the uh, stands. He's the most over guy here, probably. Really, he's the most over guy in, in ECW. Yeah, I mean, as far as with the crowd, the fan favorites. Yeah, I mean, right. he, he's their special. He's their upper mid card guy who everybody believes. You know, they're grooming for the world title. He won that television title in April of this year, and people are already clamoring for it. And when eventually Mike Awesome would win the the world title. That was the match everybody wanted to see. The television champion against the world champion, RVD, taking on Mike Awesome. What's your impression of um, Jinzei Shinzaki uh, up to this point? Uh, can do a lot of things. The, 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 the spots are not too well coordinated, but he's, he's, he obviously is very athletic. And I, I think you're right. I, I, I agree with the saying this match is sloppy and, and understandably so. He's laying in those kicks though. You know, that will always, that will always kind of change things. If, uh, if you, if your opponent is not, wow, now that is a, that is phenomenal move. Blocked it into as I guess we call that a Pele kick now. Maybe. I'm just I'm just relearning my moves. You know that, don't you? What's been the, the toughest thing about that for you? What uh, doing uh, commentary now? Yeah, relearning the moves or I mean, yeah, that that's the toughest thing. The I mean, I don't know. Everything's got a name now, right? And, and I don't know the names. You can't just yell what a maneuver. Like Vince yeah, Vince. and and that's kind of what I'm doing. Right. So and, and I feel bad about that. I'm I'm I'm. There's a couple of. Uh, of sites where you can look and you can type in the names of the move and they'll show you. But what one guy calls a Northern lights, DDT, some guy may call something else. Uh, so it, that's, that's the toughest thing. So I just kind of sit back and I let rich and, or Matt striker call the moves. And I just go, wow, like there, wow. Missed a knee drop. Chat me up about uh, Rich and Matt Stryker. What's the difference between working with both of those guys down at MLW? Uh, boy, that's a good question. I've only worked with Matt once. Uh, Matt Matt comes from a background where he'd wrestled, right? So I think he I think he knows more about the moves uh, and what the moves mean and what the moves can do than Rich does. Uh, Rich brings a, a great amount of enthusiasm and excitement to what he's doing. And the good news about both of them is they both have done play by play. So when I drop off the table and have completely lost in the match, they can pick it up. So, but I like working with both of them. And I, again, I, I can't tell you one announcer through my career that I didn't like working with. With the exception of maybe Louis Spicoli. Why didn't you like Louis? Because Louis was uh, just completely out of control, which I guess is what they wanted him to be, but he was just completely out of control. And he really he was just trying to, it, it was like, uh, like Heenan and I calling a match, and we had Spicoli with us, and Spicoli was just there trying to interrupt us as we're trying to call a match. That's what it was, and that's what I didn't like about it. And again, I'm, I'm not always blaming Louie for that. That's probably what they wanted him to be. It's like, you know, two guys trying to call a match and, you know, Heenan's already the smart ass and Louie's trying to be a bigger smart ass than Heenan. And how's that going to work? So it was kind of tough, but other than that, I liked everybody and I really, really enjoyed my work with striker, man. Uh, but one of the reasons is because, you know, I watched some Lucha underground. I thought he was sensational, right? I mean, I'm going to be very honest with you. Striker could probably end up doing the play-by-play, -play and I could just move off into the sunset. Nobody wants that. Shut up. 
Well, I could. I mean, I could very easily do that and just do a podcast the rest of my life. The rest or of basically. your life? Ugh. Or ba- <laughs> Well, I'm not going to live that much longer. It's not like I'm your age. I'm not going to live that much longer. <laughs> yeah, you got a lot. You got a lot of you got a lot of time left in your life, buddy. You're just getting married. That's you true. just start. You just starting your life, buddy. You just, you just young man. You're starting your life. You're in the formative years of your life. That's funny. Okay, Masabu missing those blows. You know, a leg sweep. You know, you know, Conrad. You brought up a real good point about the uh, the difference in language, and it's pretty it's pretty apparent here, isn't it? I think so. You know, my buddies were so enamored with the the star power of these because, you know, a lot of my friends were super fans of the FMW tapes and uh, there was nobody in our circle who wasn't a fan of Sabu or Rob Van Dam. How about Sabu even teasing, biting the knee? I was a big (laughs) fan of, um, the, uh, the boots, the, the footwear rather of Hayabusa with the, like the split toe thing. Yeah. You know, I have a a funny Hayabusa story. I was at a TNA show back when they were doing weekly pay-per-views in Nashville on Wednesday nights. I think you made one of those, right? Yes. So, um, I'm there with my buddy who's uh, working for TNA doing a lot of video on demand stuff. And we're hanging out in the back hours before the show starts. And Ricky Morton is trying to make conversation with the Japanese performer there. Who's going to be on the show that night. And he wanted to ask about Hayabusa. Because Hayabusa had been hurt probably three years prior to this, where, where, where the injury happened. I think that happened in 01. Um, anyway, this is 04. And Ricky Morton wants to ask this Japanese guy about Hayabusa. And it's one of the funniest things, and a lot of people do this, but it was just hilarious to me because, and what a spot there by Van Dam, springboard, mm. and then drop kick to the face of Hayabusa. Ricky Morton thought you could get louder and slower and then people would speak the language (laughs) and it was everything I could do to not laugh, but I'm not supposed to be in the back at all. So I'm just keeping my mouth shut and trying to keep it together. But Morton's like on the side outside, smoking a cigarette, trying to make conversation with this Japanese guy who clearly doesn't speak any English. How (laughs) is Hayabusa? Hayabusa, Hayabusa son, is Hayabusa okay? And then he would like take his two fingers like he was selling phone books back in the day for the yellow pages, yeah. like let your fingers do the walking. Is yeah. Busa son walking? Does he walk or does he roll? And he starts moving his hands like he's simulating wheeling a wheelchair. Is he in chair? Is Hayabusa son in chair or does he walk? Does Hayabusa walk? This thing goes on forever and I just cannot look away. And Ricky Morton is being so sincere in checking yeah. on his friend Hayabusa. It's a legitimate concern and he really is checking. But poor Ricky, you can be as loud as you want. He ain't deaf. He doesn't right. understand English. Right. Getting louder doesn't make it more understandable. Right. Talking slower isn't going to help. <laughs> yes. Well, I understand that on uh, the flip side of that, that, that was Tennessee meets Tokyo right there. I understand on the flip side of that, Hayabusa was asking one of his guys, or an English guy back at uh, in Tokyo, does Ricky Morton still get all that pussy? Or is he too old? Does he still fuck something every night or is his dick drooping? And he did the finger, you know, dick drooping, something like that. Well, maybe he could have, uh, just used a little coxa flop. <laughs> Look at this. So Fonzie throws him a chair. He drops it. He's on the top rope. <coughs> Sabu coming off the top with a chair. Oh my God. Innovative stuff, man. Yeah, it is. Absolutely. Also can break a rib too. Ricky Morton. Sure glad they got into the Hall of Fame. Whoa. 
by the way, Sabu and Rob Van Dam need to be in the hall of fame. Yeah. You know, I, I, uh, wow. Look at that by how boots look up top. They got their spots in there, man. Whoa. And to save that time. Now the match is starting to pick up some steam. Some pretty good spots. I'm not so sure who all is in the Hall of Fame. I, I do. Uh, I, I saw that someone had sent us sent me something that said that Lord Alfred Hayes was in the Hall of Fame. But maybe I was wrong. I guess he was inserted in there with a bunch of other guys. Yeah, he was. But he should have had his own private moment. His own separate moment. He's dead. Right. I, I know that. Well, how can he have a private moment if he's dead? Well, I mean, his family should have. Okay. Well, he went in the pro wrestling hall of fame in 2014 and he went in the WWE hall of fame this year with 982 other people. Right. When you go in, do you think you'll go in with 982 other people? Or do you think you'll get your own strut that ass moment? Thank you very much. I'm not going in. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. No, I am not. If they offered, you wouldn't take it. Nope. Shut the fuck. Do you know that Lois Shivani has been instructed that if I die before she does, and my kids have been instructed that if I die, not to accept the Hall of Fame nomination? Get out of here. No, I'm serious. Well, <laughs> I know people up there, and I'm overruling you wow. both. You're in. Ugh. No, I'm yeah. not. One, two. If you're not here, I get veto power. I'm putting you in. No, I'm not. I'm not doing it conrad it doesn't mean a damn thing to me yeah. and i'm sorry I don't, I don't want it to i don't want to try to discount the guys that are in there that deserve it well hang on now but, hang on now hang but on they're now. there but listen bob cottle is never going to get in the hall of fame lance russell's never going to get in the hall of fame and they both should be there so it ain't fair to put a tony shivani in if those guys are going to not go in and that's the reason but well first of so all there it, they're going to be in before you're in. I hope they will be. Then I'll reconsider. Good. But other than that, it's, it's not what, what is a big deal to me is being able to be here on Patron to be able to be here on MLW.com MLW radio.com. Jesus Christ. What a power bomb that was. Whoa, a four fifty and a two count. Uh, and be able to talk to people. By the way, I'm still making T-shirt calls. I haven't been able to make many. You got to uh, still... you got to record that and throw it up on Patron too, because those are some fun interactions. Yeah, I know. I haven't been able to do one since like the uh, in like two weeks because of I just haven't had the time off. No, I got you. But I've been making some international calls anyway. Thanks for getting the T-shirts at LoisRules.com. How about this? Boston Crab and Van Dam up top. Whoa. Whoa. Hell of a high spot there, guys. You're right. Very innovative. Was that the three count? No, no. it was two count. Didn't see the referee. He was out of camera shot you'll, there. You'll know the finish when you see it. There will be no debate. You know, our main cameraman uh, with uh, MLW is Charlie, who was a cameraman for all this stuff here, too. Uh, Barisi, right? Am I saying his name right? I, I believe so. I just know him by Charlie. Really, a, really a, a good guy and a good cameraman. Knows his stuff. I really think there's something to be said about guys who have shot wrestling throughout their career. Just the knack of knowing. I mean, Jackie Crockett was like that. Just the knack of knowing where to go, where to be. Being the right place at the right time. Well, where would we be without a table, right? How many tables is this they've, they've uh, gone through now? Three in this get, in this show? This will be the third one. Yeah. What are they I think so. What are they What are they setting up here? My god. I can only imagine. So, Sabu is down. Give everybody a time cue. Tell them where you are. Okay, I am, as he comes off with a big shoulder block that time, I am at 132.07. 
8, 9, 10, 11, and a false finish at 13. Is that where you are just about? We're close, yeah. aren't we? We're, yeah, we're on it. We're closer than we were in our uh, <laughs> our last time. <laughs> oh, Wow. Dragon screw leg whip. I remember that because I work with Mike Tanay. Tanay taught me a lot about different holds. Really? Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. I picked up on the stuff he said. It, it was pretty. It's pretty apparent to me that to really be in to, to really be able to call it, you got to be more. You got to spend more time watching it than I really have in the past. So I'm doing a lot of that now, trying to watch some stuff, you know, on YouTube and and uh, trying to watch a lot of the independent things and listen to what the announcers say, what they call, and if you hear this from you know many different announcers, then you know that's what it is. In other words, do your homework. Right. Which I haven't had to do, and now I got to do. Among all the other things I'm doing, what are they doing here? I mean, the table had been set up for a while. They're improvising here a little bit. The table broke. So you know what they should just do? They should just peel off the leg and jab it up somebody's ass. I mean, that would kind of work here. You want to jab it up someone's ass? Well, I mean, why not? That's some that spot we haven't seen yet. No, we haven't seen anything up anyone's ass yet. <laughs> Get ready. Get ready. Someone listening to this podcast will say, I got an idea for a spot. Now the table's gone now. <clears throat> the table is gone now. The legs are broken. Unless they prop it up on the corner, there's no way to use it. So they bring in another one, of course. <laughs> and they just must, then they bring in a second one. Hey, here's an idea. Bring in a third one. Oh, my God. I guess uh, I, I think there was one time they, they stacked three tables on top of each other in WCW, and they tried that, which was pretty fucking nuts. And the fact is, the fact that one is broken, it looks like they probably were going to try it. Look at Fonzie coming to the aid, man. Make sure the table is set up. <laughs> All right, this is kind of out. This kind of uh, in the in the scheme of things, putting a table is this a, a tag team match where anything goes? Every ECW match was a tag team match where anything goes. Got it. Here they go. Been setting up this spot for quite a while. Whoa. Yes, sir, baby. Now that may be the spot of the night. I like the Mike Awesome power bomb from out from inside out, but that may be the spot of the night for a visual. Two guys flying. And there's your finish. One, two, three. Yes, sir, man. It started out slowly, Conrad, but it built some steam, didn't it? What do you built think? some steam. What do you I think? liked it. Didn't like the first of it. I think I was critical of starting so slow, but that double spot, lo double leg drop from the top on the table was was the spot of the night. Yes, sir, man. ECW, ECF and W. Absolutely. God, I'm enjoying this stuff. Up next, we and got I, Taz and Bam Bam Bigelow for the fucking yeah. world title. This is uh, that's a fun show, man. Yeah. So, let me get this right. Our buddy uh, Bruce Pritchard doesn't look like this shit at all. No. Okay. Look. You, you, okay. There, there's a part of me. There's a part of me that says, "Eh, come on, guys. That's not wrestling as I know it." But here's the part of me that trumps that. And the part of me that trumps that, that is that, am I entertained? Fucking A, I'm entertained. And that's what it's about, isn't it? When you get right down to it? Yeah. Being entertained? No doubt. So I'm entertained. So there. That's why I say I like it. like to see more Francine strutting around the ring. But be that as it may, do they let her talk on the mic here? Was she able to talk or was it just Shane? No, she's not talking on this one. 
Yeah, okay. Shane was uh, Shane was a very good, you know, Shane worked with me a couple of times. Shane was a got a good voice, can project. Come on, show the show the finish. I got to show that finish again. They didn't show it. Yikes. Well, the tape, the truck didn't have it. Oh, here we go. Wow, yes, sir. They found it. Absolutely. So, again, yeah, there's a part of the old school Tony Schiavone that says, yeah, come on. Nothing means anything because everybody's going through a table and everybody's doing a high spot and everybody's kicking out. But then again, if you're going to sit down for two and a half, three hours and want to be fucking entertained, you got to love this. And that's what it's about. Make me happy. <laughs> 